Well, earlier today, um, there was an announcement from the GMA that uh, they were moving Saltex um, to a new date at the, at the beginning of March. And on this particularly busy day for the GMA, I'm actually delighted to be joined by Jeff Webb, the, the chief executive of the GMA, uh, taking time out of a particularly busy day to, to have a chat. So, Jeff, this we've all been in extraordinarily difficult circumstances over the last while, and we've been taking a day at a time. But you and the GMA board haven't really been able to think of things along day-to-day -day lines because you've had Soltex to think about. Obviously, we'd all hoped that uh, at the beginning of November, things would have been better, that the uh, NEC would no longer be used as a Nightingale hospital, but you couldn't really take the risk. So I would have thought now you've given everybody a little bit of certainty by moving to the new dates at uh, the beginning of March. Is that a fair assessment? That, that's a very accurate assessment. Um, <laughs> I, th I think uh, if we if we go back in time to the end of February, we, we weren't even contemplating a, a move from November or anything to do with um, having to move Saltex. We were actually enjoying the bounce of 2019 and it was our most successful uh, sign up since we've moved to the NEC. Um, so what what's transpired in the last two months really um, has just turned the entire uh, industry on its head. And I think we like everybody else were waiting and hoping for some more positive news from the prime minister two sundays ago uh, i think for large scale events there wasn't really any movement there was no real clarity of, of when uh, the lockdown would, would relax and especially concerning large scale mass gatherings th there was literally nothing there that uh, we felt was um, positive enough um so we took some soundings obviously within and we then talked to various people externally as well uh, just to really get a flavour for what the mood was and, and I think even probably in the past two weeks that the mood has shifted significantly and we, we just felt that it's really the safest um, move to make in terms of um, making sure that everybody feels safe and confident that they can go out and enjoy a trade show and actually get the value that they need from that, whether they are a visitor uh, or the exhibitor market. So we took the decision um, to move to the spring dates. And of course, to get that, we had to get to the NEC and negotiate um, a good deal for everybody. And we hope we've done that. Mm -hmm. So what's, are you saying it was only two weeks ago that you and the board thought, right, we're willing to do something actively now. And if that was the case, what has been the process with you and the board? What did what pros and cons did you have to weigh up over the whole picture? Because it's no small thing making such a significant move. So have you had, uh, obviously, even meeting with, together would be a tricky process. So has it been this type of phone call with all your board? Yes, we, we haven't sat in the room together since um, February board meeting. Um, and um, we're about to have our next board meeting tomorrow, which will be by Zoom. But um, so everything's been done working remotely. Uh, we're all home based. Um, however, I mean, I think in terms of making that decision, we just wanted to act responsibly and with clarity. Um, clearly, everybody can see what's happening at the NEC at the moment. There is a Nightingale Hospital there. Um, it's part of that national network and we, we all obviously support that the network to keep people safe. But I think really it was um, becoming the common sense uh, option as much as it actually will uh, stretch us. It, it will stretch us financially because we are literally moving our cash flow by a whole four months. Um, so it probably wasn't uh, the accountant's preferred decision but we feel it's a responsible decision for the industry. Um, and, and to give that clarity and as well, uh, we did look at the November date line coming back into line in 2021, but we ruled that out for really obvious reasons that it, it would be irresponsible for us to ask twice in one calendar year uh, for the market to put their hands into the pockets and attend one of our exhibitions. And we just didn't feel that was right. So that's why we've secured um, the 2022 dates as well, uh, which will be the spring cycle. So we'll be back to a 12-month cycle, but we'll be operating in spring rather than autumn.
Um, were the March date something you considered five years ago when you when you made the change from, from Windsor to um, to Birmingham and made the change in time then? Um, basically, what I'm saying is, are these are the March dates or early spring dates a preferred option overall for the, uh, the for the GMA? No, it hasn't come like that at all. Actually, it, I mean, I think we were looking then from a September to a November move. Um, and I can remember back in time, one of the big reasons was uh, moving from that first weekend in September at, at Mary Windsor back to the NEC in November was quite a lot to do with the public school market. And the fact that a lot of schools were going back into action the very week that we were running our trade show. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing we know has been a positive from, from the move is, is enabling that sector to have um, more affinity with, with the trade show as it stands now. I think with, with the move, it was more because um, we had to move quickly because we, we personally believe that other exhibitions will be talking to the NEC about moving their deadlines. Um, we've seen shows that would have appeared in March moving to July. And then you see July shows looking to move to the autumn. And, and we just that as a bit of a tidal wave uh, approach. We took the decision based on the same facts as everybody else. It's, it's looking at the politics, looking at the science, um, and looking at the risks uh, of, of all of those computations that moved us to uh, the, the spring dateline. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason is we, we do see it as a good period in the year where you get the transition across sports turf for winter and summer sports as, as well. But um, obviously it doesn't come without risk, but we, we feel that this is, um, as I say, a responsible course of action to take. And we hope both visitors and exhibitors will see the merits of that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, the early part of the year is quite a busy time for, for shows in this country. And there's also the, the golf industry show in America, which attracts a lot of the same um, exhibitors that you have and, and Bigger has. Um, have you heard from any of these major manufacturers? Are they positive about this particular move? Are they thinking you're going to be a bit putting a little bit of pressure on these guys for having so many shows over a short period of time? Quite the opposite, actually. The ones that we've talked to and we've personally been calling every exhibitor on, on our list uh, during the course of today and taking soundings, as I said, over time is everybody sees the benefit of that. And we did actually look at, obviously, the existing calendar of shows, including BTME, including the American trade shows, be that the GCSAA or the STMA show. Um, and that's part of the reason we moved to the March date. Um, in, in effect, we've moved as far away from that calendar date line as we think is possible and feasible to still run a successful domestic show in, in the UK. Um, one of the options we did have was earlier in February, but we ruled that out because we felt it was too close to the other shows. And uh, from an NEC's perspective, they must have a huge headache trying to uh, renegotiate all these shows over the course of a whole year. Um, have you what, what has your relationship been with them over the last month or so? And adding to that, not, it's not just about exhibition space, it's hotel rooms, it's all your technical support. Is every, all these other pieces of the jigsaw falling into place as well for the, the 3rd and 4th of March? Yeah, um, in terms of um, the relationship with the NEC, in, in our case, and I can only go on the contacts that I've had, um, they, they have furloughed an immense amount of staff. So our first issue that we had is we lost our account manager uh, to furlough, but they did do a very good handover for us. And subsequently, we've had a very good uh, run of conversations and the NEC have uh, done everything in their power to, to work with us. And I think part of that is, is we got in there early. We expressed our concerns about the November debt. Uh, we asked them to look at the options that have now come to fruition and they went away and did that. So, and, and you're quite right, I think, when I last looked at it, something like 60 trade shows had either moved or cancelled uh, during the period of just 2020. So the, the impact of COVID is, you know, impacting on them as a host. Uh, is ex the, the whole global exhibition business has been impacted by COVID as well. Mm -hmm. And I think pretty much you're looking to get to the end of this year 
and, and begin again. Um, that's pretty much the message that, that we've been looking at. Well, you find that you're working fairly close with those, maybe hopefully not too many companies for whom that date doesn't work for them. Will you be working closely to try and come up with some sort of arrangement with companies that can't make that early March date? Well, we've, we've got a whole lot of FAQs, which I won't go into right now. They're going out to the exhibitor market as, as we speak. Um, but we've, we've been, I think, really responsible with it. We've uh, released new datelines for payment schedules to try and help people. And there's a message contained within those FAQs that if companies do feel that it may be a struggle to talk to us, and we, we look at each company on its merits and, and on a case by case basis. But um, I, I can honestly say that, that we've been on calls all day today and overwhelmingly the response has been positive. Brilliant. Now, is this new date something? I know you mentioned for 2022 you've been retaining this date. Will, will we be seeing um, Soltex continuing as an early spring show as opposed to a pre-Christmas show? I always quite liked seeing all the, the Christmas show that was on next door when we were down at, uh, at, at Birmingham. But uh, that's not going to happen at the beginning of, uh, beginning of March. Um, will we be looking to stick to this date going forward beyond 2022? Um, the honest answer is we've not looked beyond... 22 we've, we've had to do the reality of, of in front of us at the moment um, we will review and we will talk to the marketplace and, and make informed decisions based on how uh, 2021 March goes and, and thereafter um, but we, we felt that it's the right thing to do to get the clarity needed uh, as I said earlier we didn't feel it was right to get two bites of one cherry in one year given the impact on the entire industry and the sector so up to 2022, we know the dates. Beyond that, um, it's probably another negotiation with the NEC and, and we'll see where we get to at that point. Well, Jeff, thank you very much. I know this has obviously been a, 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 a hectic old day for you and the rest of the guys at Milton Keynes or, or their homes close to Milton Keynes. So thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time. I, I hope and expect the new date will become a, a very popular one for, for the entire industry. And uh, good luck moving forward. And if I don't see you this side of Christmas, have a nice Christmas. Thanks, Scott. Can I just finish by saying to everybody out there, I hope that uh, you're not really badly affected by the pandemic. And we wish every business and, and everybody involved in the turf care sector the very best in the, in the coming weeks and months. And uh, we, we do hope that we can open those doors and we can celebrate uh, the turf industry once again in the springtime.